What's going on pack rats and welcome to my first playthrough of division one now This is the first time across any NHL game that I've made it to division one a few times I've made up to division three division two, but I've never actually peeked into division one So I'm excited to see the players We're gonna verse the teams of just superstars and all-stars and legends and Movembers team of the weeks eventually team of the years and by no means do I have a crappy team. I do have a bunch of good players. I got some Movembers from my favorite team, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Got Tyler Johnson and Bishop. I wish they would get an upgrade, though. They still haven't done it. But I do have some, uh, you know, some lower players. I have Palat and Kucherov assisting Tyler Johnson, making the triplets there. I do have a few 86s overall. I even have uh, Jack Johnson and Boychuk still on my team for defense. So, you know, by no means do I have a great team, but I also, on the other hand, don't have a bad team. So I think I can handle myself in Division 1, but we're going to see how it goes in this uh, first game. So I hear from lots of players that it doesn't become fun anymore when you get to Division 1. And I guess I'll experience that because it was a blast, you know, going from Division 10 to Division 2. Ask anybody that. It's a thrill. So I'm really hoping that Division 1 isn't too much of an exploit to the game it's it's I hope it's not where the people who have found out how to you know trick the AI defensemen into doing things you don't want them to do or just just glitch goal the entire time not that there are many glitch goals in this game I know there are some more efficient ways to score goals in this game I don't hold that against anybody but I just hope it's not really an exploit too much we're gonna verse Jerome 81 Le Chief and he's got Mike Madonna as his best player let's get into the game so when I first picked up the joysticks to play this Division 1 game, I was so nervous. I was not knowing what to expect in Division 1, hoping my battery in my controller didn't die out, and I was very nervous that I was going to get sniped there on the first 30 seconds into the game. But it was, a, it was a rough awakening as he did it about 20 seconds later. At this point, I was like, well, this is going to be an embarrassing upload, but since I promised everyone I was going to do it, I might as well. I was really hoping that I wasn't going to go down. 6-0 into the first uh, into the first episode of this and you know I'm just not used to playing this caliber of players and like the players that you know they control I'm, I'm used to I guess as of late playing the you know give and take series as well as just you know my other account which is about division 5 you just don't see many Tyler Sagans and Doug Gilmore's at that level but you know overall if you just stick to the fundamentals of what got you there you'll find some goals that squeak their way through Patrick Wall and it's weird playing against Patrick Wall because I've never had him perform well against me in all the games. I've probably met him four or five times in online hut this year. He's the best goalie and he's never had a good game. So also one of the things that I'm finding out whenever you play in the higher divisions is the scoring opportunities that you get really need to be capitalized on. At the end of the game, there might not be many shots on goal, but you'll find that the chances that you do get, you need to bury them. Unlike Patrick Sharp there, just lost the puck after dangling around two different people. You'll find that, you know, that situation could come hurt you down the road and, you know, right off the face off to where, you know, you don't, you don't pick up that player at the point and then Voracek's going to put one past Bishop and this guy's going to go up two to one on me. And I'm uh, definitely feeling <laughs> the heat of Division 1, but we guys just got to keep playing our game and eventually things will start to go all our way. So fortunately for us, we are going to end the first period thanks to Patrick Sharp sniping it, going far side one timer. And that's going to be it for the first period for these highlights. If you look at the stats, he has me five times the time on attack and almost twice the total shots. But thankfully, Patrick Waugh is sucking it up in net right now when we're hoping that we can do better. The time on attack is not something that I've ever seen before in some of the smaller divisions. I've kind of seen it here and there. But usually, you know, people just know how to skate around. Unfortunately, you know, my defenseman can, you know, get a stick on the puck at the right time. And overall, it's just they, they're very good at, you know, puck puck control and that's something that definitely benefits them me not ever being into division one before but it's something that I feel like I can cope with and I can understand just as long as I get used to it and feel it out so something I said before that it's all about the opportunities that you have in each game and capitalizing here's the perfect example this is a perfect one-timer that he luckily Yandel gets a stick on the puck he's gonna pass it up to Nash and then just blow by my defenders and put it past Bishop so it just goes to show you what one mistake can lead to and it can quickly backfire on division one especially with the kind of players that these you know teams have 
And credit where credit is due, Ben Bishop bailed me out so many times in this game. You'll see many highlights, you know, instances where my defense were just shot. Couldn't skate anymore, passes weren't connecting. Ben Bishop was bailing me out. He is by far one of the most important people on my team. And as you can see, he's, you know, just stonewalling them pretty much for the rest of the game. So there's a few things you can be sure of. One, Ben Bishop is absolutely going to dominate the competition. And if you give Kucherov a breakaway, he's going to tuck that. So we got a close game going here, 3-3 in the end of the second period. And my hopes for Division 1, I at least want to stay in Division 1. I don't think we have much chance of actually winning the Division 1 title, but hey, a man can dream. I don't know. We've only played one game so far, but uh, we're going to end the period, actually. One goal up after Joe Pavelski snipes it from a nice one-timer far away from the other side of the cross crease. We're looking up about the hash mark, and we have actually gained two minutes time on attack, and he has lost one. We got a lot more shots this period, so we're looking like a little bit more of a competitive game. I don't think it's just me having good shot opportunities. I think it's also a way of playing smart hockey, not dive bombing the net, actually looking for good lanes to shoot, and actually knowing the way your opponent's playing, you know, picking up on, you know, whether you can speed around him, whether you need to look out for big hits on the blue line, whether or not, you know, you need to be active in the passing game in the offensive zone. These are all things you really need to pick up on and try and understand, you know, how your opponent thinks. But, you know, in the end, if you just play your game, have fun with the game, really learn and, you know, play the kind of game that you like, you'll eventually hit your marks and you'll eventually keep winning games. So that's my little piece. Now, with all these shots, he did have some very good shots that probably should have gone in. But once again, I either got a little stick on it, I got the touch it, Bishop just, you know, bailed me out one of countless times. This one, that should have been in 99 out of a hundred times I got the lucky 1% I mean he should have buried these on the breakaway here but Bishop was just playing unreal thankfully I had a uh, you know a monster net in Ben Bishop so hopefully he can you know take us to division one title sometimes as they say in the commentary you got to be good to be lucky and lucky to be good and sometimes you just got to hope for a post here and there and hey it happens both ways you know you could you know miss some one timers and you know, you could be doing flawlessly. You could outshoot your opponents three times over, but sometimes luck might not just have it. EA might say, hey, you know what? He deserves to hit the post here and there. So it's all, it's all well and good, and it's all something you should expect from the game. So we're going to let these last two minutes of the third period play out because they were electric. But in the channel, I think the next series that we want to start doing and start putting out is going to be a versus the subscribers challenge where either we wager something or you have a chance to win a prize. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. Would you rather, you know, us agree on a card to put up and then you guys go ahead and play me for it or would you rather... You know, just me say, hey, 25K to the person who can beat me. And if, you know, they don't beat me, then that, you know, that builds up into 50K for the next challenger and 75K and, and so on. Or, you know, we just do it for a player and then overall we'll build up a bank of players. And then if you win, then you can either take the card we agreed upon or choose from the bank of players that we have left over from other, you know, one-on-one um, -on -one challenges that I've won. But you know, most importantly, it's the chance to play you guys because you guys are the ones that make this channel run. You guys are the ones that give me feedback and enjoy the content I put out. So I really just want to get you guys involved, most importantly. And Patrick Waugh is going to make one nice save there at the end of the game. That's going to be the last save he makes this game. And we're going to end the game in style. So after he <laughs> whiffs on another breakaway, he should have had a goal there. It should be 5-3. We have six and a half seconds left, and he is going to pull his goalie to add five players on the ice and we're gonna win it to Cronwall and Cronwall is just gonna rip it down the ice and put it in with 1.4 seconds left now watch this he skates over to the opposing pitch it celebrates right in their face that is just evil and we are going to finish this first game of division one off with a six to three victory over a team that I would say was pretty well stacked over our own so that was a Breath of fresh air at the end of it, and it was a sigh of relief at the same time that we didn't lose our first game in Division 1. And that's something that I'm going to 
be proud of and know that I didn't go 0-10 in my first run at Division 1. So the first game is over. I'm very excited that you guys get to follow me in my first run at Division 1. Let me remind you guys, this is the first time I've ever played Division 1. So we are 1-0 in our first time in Division 1, going for the title. And the game stats clearly show that he probably should have won that game, more double the time on attack. We had the same total shots, but let's take a look at his team. He clearly had a fantastic team. Sagan back from Voracek, starting line. He has Gilmore and Madonna as legends. Kreider, Nash, Giroux, Oposo. He has Bobby Ryan, Alex Galchenyuk, and Kessler rounding out his offense. And his defense, you know, wasn't bad also. So guys, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see in these videos, anything I can work on, but I'm glad I get to bring you this Division 1 gameplay. And until next time, guys, this is Pack Daddy. I'm out.